Hey, hey, what's up everybody? Tony with La Lita Loca. Well, it's almost the beginning of 2020, almost the new year, and you know what that means, it's time to do. No, I'm not talking about setting New Year's resolutions. It's time for the cruise lines to start nickel and diamond its customer base. Welcome back to the YouTube channel. Thanks so much for stopping by. If you're into cruising content, please consider subscribing with the notification bell on. That way you don't miss out on any of our uploads. Well, here we go. It is time to get nickel and dimed. You see it almost at the beginning of every year. Sometimes you see it in the middle of the year. The cruise lines start taking a look around and asking the question, how can we make a little more money? Well, first out of the gate on this nickel and diming adventure, Carnival Cruise Lines increasing the price of the Cheers Unlimited Drink Package on short sailings starting January the 1st, 2020. They're jacking it up $3 a day. Now, you know if you buy it in advance, you can get it cheaper than if you buy it on the cruise ship. $54.95 in advance, $57.95 on the cruise ship. That's per day per person, everybody over the age of 21 in your cabin has to buy it if one person wants to buy it. And don't forget the 18% gratuity that they put on on top of that that you can't get out of. But you do have a couple days before the end of the year and if you have one of those three or four day sailings in 2020 and you think you might buy the drink package and you wanna save the $3 a day, go ahead and buy it now because once the calendar rolls over to January 1, the new prices are in effect. If you don't get it now, too bad, so sad. The interesting irony is that just on December the 20th, Carnival Corporation, the mothership, the owner of Carnival Cruise Lines, just reported their Q4 earnings up 7% from last year, from 2018 Q4, at a whopping $4.7 billion. That's, that's a lot of coin. Why, when you're making $4.7 billion, are you increasing my drink package? Why are the cruise lines risking the happiness of their core loyal customers just to get a few more dollars on a drink package? Why are they hitting us with these micro transactions? What kind of business model is this? Why do they do it? Is it sheer greed or is it something else? Look, I'm as happy as the next person to jump up and call somebody greedy, but I just feel like it would be irresponsible of me just to say that it's greed that causes the nickel and diming. There's gotta be some sort of logical, strategic business reason. So let's look at some practical examples in other industries where this happens. Look, I've been playing this dumb game, Gardenscape. It's a free download for your phone. It's a great way to kill the time. It cost me absolutely zero to get into the game. The barrier for entry for me to play this game no barrier for entry, I just downloaded, all I had to do was have my phone and now I'm playing this game. But look, uh, some of these boards, you can't clear them unless you have the special thing like the dynamite. And uh, sometimes I don't have the dynamite. And it's at this point they're saying, hey Tony, we know you don't have the dynamite and you need the dynamite, how about spending some money? Now so far I've resisted because I'm annoyed by the fact that I have to do a microtransaction just to play this game that I seemingly got into for a super low price of zero, so I'm not doing it, I'm resisting that. I'm making the consumer decision not to spend money on that game. Now another example, and I'll draw it all together here in a second, is last week I went to the movies and I got a matinee ticket for $6, which I thought was very inexpensive. My barrier for entry into the movie only $6 and I was so stoked. Went to the movie on Christmas Day with my family. I went with my wife, I went with one of my kids. I went there, I got in, we all got in for $6 each. Very low barrier to entry. Then I went to the concession stand. I just wanted a drink, I wanted some popcorn, I wanted some candy, it's what you do at the movie. Holy moly, that was expensive. I had to take out a loan. How come a drink, a fountain drink that costs pennies on the dollar to produce, how come they charge $7 for that? Popcorn is super cheap, why am I paying $10 for popcorn? Honestly, we didn't do it, we didn't get it. Uh, again, I refuse to spend my money in this overinflated pricing model where they tricked me by making it cheap to get into. So that's, that's barrier to entry. Let me give you another couple of examples. You go to a concert, right? You shell out the $60 to see the hottest band in the world, Nickelback, and you get in there, you're ready to have a good time and you want to have an adult beverage. You go to the concession stand and you're like, I would like a beer, please. And the beer's $15. Why is the beer $15? Or you want a concert tea and it's 
Things do not cost that much to produce them, but guess what? You are in a spot where the only thing that you can do is pay that price that got you captive. You're a captive audience. You gotta pay the high beer price. You gotta pay the high t-shirt price. You gotta pay the high whatever price because there's no other options. There's no competition once they get you in the door. Sporting events the same way. You go see your favorite hockey team, Let's Go Predators, and you just wanna have a hot dog, and a hot dog's $9. How can they do that to you? Why is a bag of peanuts $8? How can they do that? because they got you in the door and now you're captive. So you got barriers to entry that are low and then you're a captive audience. Is this starting to sound like the cruise industry? It does to me. First of all, let's look at low barrier to entry. There is a lot of competition in the cruising space. I'm gonna play a clip for you from Carnival Corporation CEO Arnold Donald, who talks about this very thing. He talks about how they're building cruise ships, how they have a lot of capacity, how people are traveling less in Europe, and how they have to fill the cruise ships. So because of that, well, let's just listen to Mr. Donald for a second, and then I'll give you some commentary. But, but macro headwinds, uh, are you seeing them broadly? Or, because 2020 bookings seem to be pretty, pretty strong overall. What, what's your confidence of the, the macro consumer outlook for next year? Yeah, the bookings are strong. They're, they're, they're strong everywhere. But um, again, uh, when you have that level of capacity increase in an environment where people overall are traveling less, it's tough to get the kind of price increases that, that obviously we'd like to see. In the U.S. and the Caribbean, Things are very strong. Uh, we have, um, we're ahead on bookings and ahead on price and so on. Uh, and so the North American market overall is strong and uh, Europe is strong. It's just hard to get the yield, year to year yield increases, but we are growing profits there. There, you heard the guy say it. We've got capacity. We have uh, like a soft market of people traveling in Europe. The only thing that we can do is keep the prices low, not raise the price on the cruise fare so that we can fill up the cruise ships. AKA we have to keep the barrier to entry low. We have to make it easy for people to get on the cruise ships. So why the nickel and dime? These companies are publicly traded companies. They report to Wall Street. They have stockholders that they have to please. And the way you please stockholders is you increase your financial numbers quarter over quarter. It's not even year over year. This quarter has to be better than the last quarter. This quarter has to be better than the same quarter last year. There has to be a continued upward mobility and upward growth for the stockholders to be pleased. And if the stockholders aren't pleased, they're gonna sell the stock, they're gonna devalue your company and this is what leaders who work in publicly traded companies have to deal with they have to manage the expectation of the street of their stockholders and they have to deliver on a quarter by quarter basis opposed to a long-term strategy and the easiest lever to pull on many of these things to increase profitability to increase revenue is to implement the micro transaction is to nickel and dime is to raise the price on a drink package three dollars it sucks. It really does because the loyal customer says, hey, look, I come back here year after year, cruise after cruise, and now every time I turn around, you're trying to charge me more. And here's the thing about customer satisfaction. You don't have to keep people the most satisfied. You just have to keep people enough satisfied. And so it's this uh, ebb and flow. It's this yin and yang of how much will the consumer tolerate there is a vocal opposition to nickel and diming out there, but so far that has only been a vocal opposition. It has not hurt the cruise line's bottom line. And so this tactic of micro raising certain things after they get you in the door will continue. The interesting thing to me in all of this is there really is this conversation that should exist or could exist out there about all-inclusive cruising versus a la carte cruising. And so the nice thing about all-inclusive cruising is you just pay one price, you're not gonna get nickel and dimed, and you're gonna get everything that you need, versus a la carte that when you buy things like a Wi-Fi package or a drink package, you run the risk of those individual items being increased in their price over time, the, the nickel and diming effect that happens. But for me, I, I don't take advantage of everything that's in the all-inclusive package. I, I don't necessarily drink alcohol on every cruise. I don't, I don't always do a shore excursion. So a lot of the things that are included in an all-inclusive package, uh, I would just be overpaying for. But the risk that I run is when I do things a la carte, uh, maybe some of those things are gonna go up in price. What do you guys think about this? Do you like the idea of all-inclusive cruising 
or are you okay with the nickel and diming so that you can keep that a la carte uh, approach and just get the things that you want when you're on a cruise ship. The thing I know for sure when it comes to cruising is that uh, sometimes the price of your cruise will drop. I made a video that I feel like is pretty helpful about tracking your uh, price drops on cruises and how to possibly get some of that money returned to you before your final payment date. I'll leave that video here. You should check it out if you haven't seen it. I think it'll help you out. Thanks so much for stopping by. This is Tony with La Lita Loca, and until the next time, we'll see you on the Lido. Bye.